What's up, guys and girls? Welcome back. Happy Wednesday. Uh, a couple quick notes. Um, yesterday, we had our report card grades due, and I spent a long part of my workday looking through your OneNote folders. Uh, I sent out a lot of messages to people that are really doing an outstanding job, not only keeping up with the work, but doing you know, real excellent work. Um, if I didn't reach out to you, that doesn't mean that you're not doing an excellent job keeping up on the work. I, I really am impressed by, uh, by, by how well a lot of you are doing during this at-home learning time. A couple of you are even seem like you're more organized and doing better at home than you are in school. So that's an interesting, uh, an interesting dynamic. If you are falling behind, all right, and you're watching this video right now, I am going to call today's lesson, lesson number five, due Friday. I'm going to give you two days to complete it, um, but you shouldn't need two days. It's not a long lesson. Use tomorrow as a day to get some extra stuff made up. Friday, we'll have a Google Meet to discuss the lessons from this week. Again, no new work on Friday. Use Friday also to get some work made up. All right, so uh, let's get started, and we have a fun do now. We're going to talk about a bunch of inventions that go along with the Industrial Revolution topic, but none more so more important today than the railroads. All right, so we are beginning to talk about transportation in the United States. All right, you see a picture here of the first steam locomotive in U.S. history, and you see a picture here of old 1800s era railroad tracks with telegraph lines traveling alongside them. So we're going to begin talking about the telegraph. And I have a Morse code message for you. All right, so I will explain how this works. On the bottom, this Morse code message is a one, two, three, four, five word message. The last character is one of these guys. I forget what they call them in English class. Uh, punctuation, I believe. The last character is punctuation. And so you have a five-word message with punctuation. This is a simple Morse code decoder. I want you to pause my video crack the code and we'll come back and we'll talk about what it says. We are back and I'm sure you guys are not shocked when you cracked the code. All right, we definitely agree that social studies is the best. Let's go. Exclamation point. Now, if you figured this out, you just decoded a message using Morse code. And a couple of interesting things to look at here. First of all, Samuel Morse invented Morse code in the early 1800s, and it was a new language that was going to be used with this invention, the telegraph. All right. Using a simple machine like this, you could tap out a series of dots and dashes electronically to a, using a sender like this, to a receiver across the state, maybe even across the country. And just one of the interesting things to look at with the Morse code language, the letters that are most commonly used in the English alphabet are much simpler series of dots and dashes, letters like T and E. S is a somewhat simple one because it's tap, tap, tap. The letter A is dot, dash. The letter N, dash, dot. So these very commonly used letters, including the vowels, a, E, I, O, and U, they receive very short, simple to understand characters, and letters that are not used as often received harder to follow or understand uh, characters, like the letter Z is dash, dash, dot, dot, 
or the letter Y is dash dot dash dash. So we're going to watch a quick video, and I just want to review. Obviously, social studies is the best, all right? And uh, I just want to review quickly the history of Morse code and telegraph. So you don't have to pause my video. I'm going to play it from YouTube. It's short. And check this out. Samuel Morse Samuel and Alfred Morse and Vail Alfred first Vail demonstrated, demonstrated the electric, the telegraph, electric telegraph, telegraph at Vail's Speedwell, Speedwell Ironworks. Ironworks. The telegraph, the was, telegraph nothing was nothing short, short of, a of a revolution, enabling messages, enabling messages, to, be messages to be sent much faster, sent much than, faster previous than previous means, which, previous means, means, which, relied, which relied, on messengers relied on messengers riding on horseback. Riding on horseback. Rap Rap now, just to quickly point this out, in the background, you can hear the taps of the telegraph machine being used while the video plays. Rapid communication Rapid served as the foundation for the nation's for the economic, nation's expansion, economic expansion, in the expansion in the 19th century. New Jersey was, new Jersey at, the was at the center of the new telecommunications, telecommunications network, 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 linking the major linking cities the major along, the, cities east along the East Coast. The electric telegraph, the electric telegraph went on to play a key role, key role in developing New Jersey's reputation for innovation. Thomas Edison's universal stock ticker and his quadruple Complex telegraph, complex telegraph, enabling four enabling messages, four to, be messages to be sent on a single on wire, a single wire incorporated, the new, incorporated the new technology. Edison's successes Edison's with these inventions, these inventions provided him the means to build his renowned his Menlo, Park Menlo Park Research Park Facility. Park facility. And, it started, and it all started with the dots, with the dots and, dashes and dashes of the electric telegraph. The electric telegraph. It happened here, it happened New Jersey, here. is New a production of Kane University. All right, so hopefully that gave you a, just a brief look into the history of Morse code and the telegraph. Now, I want to talk about railroads today, but we're going to begin with the telegraph. And we're going to take a look here at my picture of the railroad tracks with the telegraph lines. The telegraph was an interesting part of railroad history because the two relied on one another. The best way I can explain an industrial revolution is using your iPhones. Your iPhone would not be the amazing invention that it is today if it weren't for earlier inventions. So your iPhone relies on satellite technology, an amazing breakthrough in technology. Your iPhone relies on the internet, you know, one of the greatest breakthroughs in the computer revolution. Your iPhone relies on the camera. All right. Another amazing invention from the last 100 or 200 years. So when you think about technology from the Industrial Revolution, like railroads, the railroads relied on other technology in order to work. In this picture, you see the railroad tracks, which are pretty cool technology on their own. But right alongside the railroad tracks, you have telegraph poles. The telephone was not invented yet. So rather than calling someone and hearing their voice, you would send an electronic message to that person through these electric wires. And so these are the wires that would have to literally be connected from one city to the next. And wherever you saw railroad tracks expanding across the United States, telegraph lines had to expand with them. A railroad schedule would not would be impossible to keep up if there wasn't electronic communication to keep those cities in contact. The old method of communication, get a guy on a horse and send him to the next city, was no longer going to work because the railroads are now literally bringing the cities closer together. So this map is a pretty cool look at the United States in the early 1800s. The red lines do not represent railroads. They represent dirt and paved roads that would have been used by horses, carriages, and wagons. The blue lines you see second most common represent the canals that we learned about yesterday. And in this map, you can see that the canal region was mostly the northeast. We learned about the Erie Canal, but there were a lot of other canals that were connecting major cities and these canals were being used to bring goods from cities to major rivers. If you look at the Ohio River, you can see that a lot of major canals connected to the Ohio River so that people that weren't right near the river could get their goods to a river like the Ohio for trade. 
The final step along this transportation revolution will be the railroad. And on this map, the black line represents railroad tracks. So you're looking for the line that looks like that. That represents the railroad tracks. And you could see at this point, I'm gonna use a bright color like purple. You can see at this point, there were not a lot of railroad tracks in the United States at this time period. There was actually very few small segments of railroad kind of littering the landscape. It'll be 30 years later that they will actually build the first transcontinental railroad that will make its way all the way across the western part of the United States. For now, railroads are new technology. You know, think of it like cars that fly. You know, this is something that you see in futuristic movies. To a lot of Americans, something like a railroad, a steam locomotive, was very futuristic technology. Now, back to my iPhone example, another invention that was necessary to make rail technology or railroad technology possible was the steam engine. You see here in this picture of the famous Peter Cooper's Tom Thumb, the inventor, you can copy this onto your worksheet, the inventor's name was Peter Cooper. Tom Thumb was the nickname of his railroad locomotive. They called it Tom Thumb, I guess, because of the way it looked. This new era in transportation would not have been possible without the steam engine. And so if you watched the video, I believe it was on Monday, you learned that this guy, James Watt, invented a steam engine in the United States in the late 1700s. But his steam engine was not used to power a railroad car. It was used as a pump that removed water from mines. So think about what that means. James Watt's steam engine was a steam-powered machine that was used to pump water out of mines. If you have men digging deep down underground, extracting minerals like you know iron ore or maybe something valuable like uh, gold, diamond, or silver, the men in those mines would often encounter lots of groundwater. And so digging that deep is challenging because water is filling up the mines while they dig. And so like all great inventions, it's a, it's a solution to a problem. James Watt invents a machine that is steam powered, which means it, was, it would use coal. And that coal that was burned was a fuel which powered the pumps which, you know, science and technology often amaze me. I honestly cannot explain exactly how this thing worked, but it was a steam-powered machine that pumped water out of the mines. My OneNote just glitched, so here's what we're going to do while my page reloads. We're going to get you guys started, and we're done with Morse code. I want to talk about railroads. So on your worksheet, we have a relatively short lesson for today. On your worksheet, Pause my video and get started answering questions three and four based on this reading. Here we go. Welcome back. Hopefully you finished the reading. Um, before we get started with the reading, I just want to point out one or two vocabulary words here that are in the reading. This word, opposition, people ask me about all the time. If you are opposed, you are against and so you can see, I said it was futuristic technology. Let's begin the reading. In the beginning, there was some initial opposition to railroads, which means people were against them. Farmers did not want railroads running through their fields. People who invested in canals worried about the competition from the railroads causing them to lose their investments. Some states protected the canals by placing limits on railroads. One such limit was that railroads could carry freight only when canals were frozen. Remember those man-made canals that we talked about, I think it was Tuesday, they came before the railroads. And people had invested a lot of time and money in developing canals in several states, 
and they saw railroads as a threat. We are here. Another problem for the railroads was concern over reliability and safety. Early steam locomotives often broke down. Soft roadbeds and weak bridges contributed to accidents. Locomotives were extremely noisy and belched thick black smoke from their smokestacks. Hot embers from smokestacks sometimes burned holes in passengers' clothing or set nearby buildings on fire. I want to write a little note here because I want to remember to come back to that. We're going to talk about the, uh, the dangerous smokestacks on those steam locomotives. Paragraph three, here we are. Gradually, railroad builders overcame problems and removed obstacles. Engineers learned to build sturdier bridges and solid roadbeds. They replaced wooden rails with iron rails. Such improvements made railroad travel safer and faster. Meanwhile, legal restrictions on railroad building were removed. By the 1850s, railroads crisscrossed the nation. The major lines were concentrated in the north and west. In New York, Chicago, and Cincinnati, I'm sorry, New York, Chicago, and Cincinnati became major rail centers. The South had much less track than the North. So two things that I highlighted. A legal restriction is basically a law. If a law is restricting you, there's laws telling you what you can't do. And these rail centers are cities with railroad centers. New York is still a rail center. You think of all the major train lines in this country, Amtrak and the Long Island Railroad and Metro North, there's many railroad lines that meet in New York City. You know, stations like Penn Station, uh, Grand Central Station, those were rail stations. They still are today, whether it's subways or elevated trains. New York is still a rail center today. So go ahead, pause again if you have not answered question three and four, and let's do it. All right, for number three, what problems did the railroads face? I'm going to make a list of many possible answers. Railroad travel was dangerous travel. Railroad cars broke down. There were legal restrictions. And people supported canals over railroads. So there were a lot of reasons that people did not support railroad travel in the beginning. But I want you to Basically, pause my video and think about this for a minute. What are the benefits of railroads over canals? Why did railroads become so much more important to American history? Canals aren't. Canals became outdated really quickly. Why would railroads wind up proving to be better than the canals? All right, pause my video, maybe write an answer or two in the margin, and we'll talk about it. Welcome back. So one thing for certain that makes railroads better than canals is that railroad, railroad travel is faster. Another thing that made railroad travel better than canals, you do not need a body of water to travel by railroad. It's pretty amazing the way they laid these tracks. They could lay tracks very quickly. The first step if they were laying tracks would be to to clear the land. So let's say this land is going to be used to lay railroad tracks. The first step would be to, bad example, to clear the land. So let's just pretend they cleared the brush down the middle of the land. They would then lay out a gravel or crushed rock base for the railroad tracks. And an army of workers could do this very quickly. Once they laid out gravel or a crushed rock base, the next step would be those large wooden rail ties and they would lay those down equally and they had to be very level. And once those large wooden rail ties were laid down level and evenly, the last step would be the iron or steel tracks. 
and the iron or steel tracks would be laid on top of the wooden rail ties. One of the things that the reading talked about was the original railroad tracks weren't laid safe enough and they weren't laid uh, you know, securely so there were accidents. Once they got the hang of laying railroad tracks, railroad travel became much safer. Question number four, how did railroads overcome problems? Let me use a different pen. If you did not answer this yet, pause and do it. They began to build safer locomotives safer tracks and safer bridges. And the other thing that began to overcome the problems was that a lot of the rail uh, the legal restrictions were removed. I highlighted that when we read the legal restrictions were a huge issue for railroads and that's going to change. In the early days, 1830s, 1840s, they didn't have a lot of government support. By the 1850s and 1860s, the guys building railroads in the United States are going to become some of the richest and most powerful businessmen in the world. All right, we're going to finish up with this graph, a little math on a Wednesday. Pause my video, answer question five and six on the graph. It's a bar graph, if you did not figure that out yet. The bars on the graph are represented by railroad tracks. So you're using the bar graph to answer questions five and six. Go ahead. Pause the video. We are back. How are we doing? Approximately how many miles of track were laid between 1855 and 1860? So we're trying to come up with the difference in the number of track laid between 1855 and 1860. So the first thing we have to do is estimate the numbers for each. So I'm going to say that in 1855, looking over here, we had 18,000 miles of track. And by 1860, I'm going to say we had 31,000 miles of track. So now in order to get that answer, I need to subtract... I'm not very good at math, but I think I'm doing this right. Looks to me like the answer is 13,000 miles of track were laid between 1855 and 1860. So that's a lot of track. You're seeing a very large upswing in the amount of railroad tracks being laid in the United States. And one of the factors here, by 1860, you're going to be getting into the Civil War in a little bit. Not today, but later on this month, next month. These railroad tracks were needed during the Civil War. The other thing that really helped lead to that upswing in railroad travel was westward expansion. And that's an interesting factor because most of the railroad tracks in the United States were either in the northeast or out west because railroads, railroads were really used to bring people and raw materials out west. So let's finish up with number six. What raw materials were needed to build and run the railroads? This is not in the graph. Let's make a little list. Pause if you think you know on your own. Steel and iron was used for both the tracks and the locomotives. Another big raw material that was needed for the railroads was the coal that is used to power the steam engine and the steam locomotive. Another resource that was needed would be wood for the tracks and the railroad ties. They would rely on some sort of crushed rock and gravel to lay the railroad tracks as well. I am not sure if it's considered a raw material, but I am going to add the telegraph 
and the telegraph lines that were needed to connect cities. And last but not least, we're going to end it on this note today, manpower. All right, you had armies of workers that laid these tracks across the country. Sometimes teams of workers would literally race to see who could lay tracks faster. And it's, you know, it's on. It's a transportation revolution. It's a huge part of the industrial revolution. And, uh, you know, you can see everything we did here. A little shorter lesson. Interesting stuff, though. Reminder, today's Wednesday. You should finish this lesson by Friday. You guys that get your work done right on top of, uh, right on time, you'll be off tomorrow. I'll check in quickly just to make sure there's no questions. Uh, Friday, we're going to have a Google Meet again, so uh, you can look ahead to what we have coming for the rest of the week. Hopefully, everybody has a great day. Weather looks nice. Get out there, do, do, get out there and do something healthy. Get a little exercise in your yard. We will uh, 